Alright, uh, what we want to do here is just do a quick video, a real quick video of our solving for sample size. I've talked a little bit about this in the past, but I just want to kind of go over it one more time. Remember that um, when we're solving for the sample size, usually we're going to tell you the margin of error. The margin of error is always the value that's always going to be a plus or a minus. It's what we want to be in between, okay? Because remember, when we calculate confidence intervals, we always start off with the proportion we saw, plus or minus a margin of error, or we start off with an average we saw, plus or minus a margin of error. So this margin of error is always the plus or minus value that we want to add, <laughs> excuse me, or subtract. <laughs> and we're going to use that to help us find the sample size to um, find the best solution. So remember our two formulas for margin of error. When you're working with proportions, it's Z star times your standard error, which is P hat Q hat divided by sample size, and that's what we're solving for, is the sample size. Or when you're working with means, the margin of error is a T star times the standard deviation of your sample divided by the square root of your sample size. And again, we're solving for that sample size. Um, so note that there's two different formulas. How do you know which one you're working with? Um, Proportions, percentages, you're usually going to see percentages or you'll see the word proportion. Means, you're usually going to have units, like it'll say um, inches or feet or miles or some type of unit, seconds, minutes. So that you know that it's definitely a mean and all the problem usually does say average or mean as well. So let's look at two examples for the two situations. An environmental protection, protection agency investigator wants to know the proportion of fish that are inedible because of chemical pollution downstream of a factory. The answer must be within, so there's our margin of error, we must be within 3% at the 96% confidence level. How many fish should be in the sample? So first off, I see the word proportion, so I know I'm proportions, and I see the word percentage, so I know I'm working again with, with percentages or proportions. So the margin of error is equal to a Z star times the formula for smart, standard error, which is P hat Q hat divided by M. Now, they tell you the margin of error, that's the plus or minus number. So I want to be within 3% to make sure you change that to a decimal. 96% Z star, I'm just going to do a quick invert norm of 0.02, 4%, 2% bottom tail, 2% the top tail, so I'm concerned with the tail probability. So I'm going to invert norm 2%, I get 2.054. Now, what do I use for P hat and Q hat? There is absolutely nothing in this problem that's going to indicate what that proportion could be. Again, proportion of fish that are in inedible. I have no idea. So the only choice I have is to use 0.25. I'm sorry, what am I talking about? Point, well, let me erase this. <coughs> I was got a little bit ahead of myself there. The only options I have to use for P and Q are 0.5 and 0.5. So that's the only options I have. So that's why I'm going to have to go with 0.5 and 0.5. It would just be 50-50. And then I'm going to solve for n here. So make sure you divide by the 2.054 first. So 0.03 divided by 2.054. And I get a pretty small number, 0.0146. I am going to store that on my calculator for accuracy. And that's going to equal the square root of, I can actually do that in my head. 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25 divided by n. Square both sides to get rid of that square root. And I get uh, a very small number. I get 0 0.00021. So very, very small number. Once again, I'm going to store that on my calculator for accuracy. And that's going to be equal to 0.25 <coughs> divided by n there. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by n to get that n to cancel out. So I get 0 0.00021n equals 0.25. And now I'm just going to divide both sides by that really, really small number that hopefully you stored on your calculator. So I'm going to get uh, 0.25 divided by x, the number stored on my calculator, and I get my sample size of approximately 1171.92. So I'm going to round that to 11712. 1172 fish will give me that very small margin of error of 3% at 96% confidence level. Now, working with means, ball bearings are manufactured by a process that results in a standard deviation in diameter of 0.025. You'll see why that's needed. What sample size should be chosen if we wish to be 99% sure of knowing the diameter within 0.01 inch? So how do I know this is means? Because it's not a 0.01%, it's a 0.01 inch, it's units. So that means it must be means, because proportions would be a percentage. So the formula here is margin of error equals a T star times the standard deviation of your sample divided by the square root of your sample size. So the margin of error is the 0.01. They want me to have a very, very small margin of error. They may be within 0.01 inch. 
T star. Now here's the problem. T star is based on the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is your sample size minus one. Well, newsflash, I have no idea what my sample size is. That's what the problem is trying to figure out. So in this case, and in this scenario only with means, will you resort to having to use a Z star because you have nothing else to use. So for 99% confident, invert norm 0.005, and I get a Z star of 2.576. Now I would love to be using T star, but I don't even know what my sample size is. Now, how about that standard deviation? And again, you have to know that standard deviation as well for S right there. So that's the issue. With proportions for P and Q right here in the formula, if you don't have any idea, it's fair to just use 0.5 and 0.5. In a problem with means, you can't just make up a standard deviation. There's not some basic standard deviation you can just make up and choose. You actually have to have some type of standard deviation known in the problem. So that is the standard deviation they told you is 0.0. Two, five, divided by the square root of your sample size. So again, Z, because I don't even know my sample size, st uh, standard deviation, the 0.025 is going to be given to you, and now i got to solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by the 2.576. So I get 0.01 divided by 2.576, and I get, again, 0 0.004. Please make sure you store that number for accuracy on your calculator, or else you're going to be way off. And next, a little bit different here, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by the square root of n to get those to cancel, and that's going to put a square root of n up here. So I get 0 0.004 times the square root of n equals 0 0.025. Now I'm going to have to divide both sides by the 0 0.004, so that's 0 0.025, divided by that stored value, and I get a, miraculously, I can get an exact 6.44, and now obviously that would need to be squared to find for my sample size. So my sample size would need to be 41.47, which I would round up to 42. If I'd round down, it probably wouldn't be um, accurate enough. So it's better to always round up, even though the 4.47 would tell you to round down. You're going to round up, so that way you're over what you need. So a sample size of 42 would give me a very small margin of error of the 0.01. So um, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Two different scenarios with proportions. You don't have to be given anything other than your uh, margin of error because you could use 0.5 and 0.5 for P and Q hat. When you're working with means, you do have to be given a standard deviation or else you, there's nothing you can just make up to put in place of S there. So hopefully those two problems make sense. You'll see a couple of those in multiple choice potentially on your test. And um, we'll practice some more in class.